This is probably the hardest video that I've ever filmed and to be completely honest with you, I'm kind of nervous. You could probably hear it in my voice because when it comes to weight, if you've ever struggled with it, it can be extremely difficult to talk about, uh, especially in such a public way. Um, but if I can help anybody out there, then it's totally worth it. To give you guys a little bit of a backstory, um, I've struggled with weight the majority of my adult life. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't struggle with weight. Um, if anything, people would always call me Skinny Minnie, considering my name is Minnie, so they'd call me Skinny Minnie, String Bean, Daddy Long Legs. All of my nicknames kind of uh, revolved around how small I was, uh, but that definitely wasn't the case when, you know, when I was an adult. Um, I had something happen about 10, 11 years ago, if not a little bit longer, that really put me into such a funk. It caused me to go into depression to where the only, the only comfort that I found was food. And I developed what some people might call a unhealthy relationship with food. Uh, of course, I didn't see it that way at the time, but then, um, I would have something happen later on in life that, um, you know, consequences in my life that uh, definitely, you know, pointed at the fact of the relationship that I had with food. Uh, but I'll get into that in just a second. So for the last 10 plus years, I have tried every diet under the sun. I can't tell you how many times I've tried each diet. And I would do it. I would be all excited about it. And then I'd stop doing it after a week a week and a half, two weeks. If I lost five pounds, I was stoked. And then the way that I would celebrate would be by going out to eat and then I would fall off the wagon and those five pounds that I lost, I would end up gaining 10 pounds. And I would yo-yo all the time. It was just a constant struggle, you know, and nothing that I did really really meshed with, with me, you know, like I said, I would do it for a little bit and then I'd fall out of love with it. Or I, I'd, I'd just kind of be like, eh, I don't want to do it anymore. It didn't motivate me to do it. Um, and at work, a lot of my coworkers, um, focused on my weight and they would constantly say, they would constantly talk about my weight. I also had family members that zeroed in on my weight and it was very difficult for me to, um, to pull myself out of that because I felt like people didn't even see me for me. They didn't, they didn't, it didn't matter what I did, what I didn't do, what I said, or what I didn't say. They were just so focused on my weight and people would constantly say, why don't you lose weight? Why don't you lose weight? Why don't you join a gym? Why don't you do this? Why don't you don't, you know, do that? And it's so easy for someone to tell you, oh, just go to the gym, go lose some weight, stop eating. But until you have a different frame of mind, it's, it's almost like it goes in one ear and out the other. At least that's what happened to me, you know? And then I would kind of beat myself up because I was just thinking, if it's so easy, why can't I do it? Why can't I do it? And then that would add on to the stress that would add on to, um, to the fact that I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? So I felt like it kind of made me a little bit more depressed and it was just an uphill battle that I was, that I was nowhere near being able to, to get to. So like I said, this went on for many years. So clothes shopping has always been a complete nightmare for me. Um, because especially jean shopping, like shopping for denim, I would, or uh, shorts or, or, or bottoms or anything like that. Because when I would try on the clothes, I would get, I would be so hard on myself because something didn't fit. Or I would look at the tag and the tag was a size 16. It was a size 18. And it was so hard for me to feel good about myself because all I saw when I looked in the mirror was someone completely different. And it's almost like all the labels, everything that everyone has ever called, called me was just kind of written all over my face. And it was very difficult to, to see beyond that. So this went on for years. And, uh, like I said, it was just, it was like this, an emotional roller coaster for me. So fast forward to April, 2017, last year, 
um, I ended up having to have um, emergency gallbladder surgery. I had my gallbladder removed. Um, I did a video where I talked about it briefly. I will put it on the description box below if you guys are uh, interested in it. Um, but I had to get my gallbladder removed and that's really what kick-started my whole weight loss journey. And had it not been for that, I can honestly tell you, I don't think I would have given it my all as much as I have now. And gallbladder surgery is very, or having your gallbladder removed is, is very normal. It's very common. A lot of people, um, you know, have the surgery and then they go back to their, to their lives. They go back to their eating habits. Uh, but for me, it was a little bit different because like I said, it was emergency. I had gallstones that were abnormally large and my gallbladder had stopped working. So it kicked my liver into overdrive and it made my liver enlarged. I had fatty deposits and I had scarring. And what really kind of put things into perspective was when the doctor came out to tell my family she needs to she needs to she needs to change the way that she eats or she's going to need a liver transplant. And that scared the crap out of me. Luckily, the liver is one of those organs that can regenerate itself uh, if you take care of it. But it scared me because I didn't think that my relationship with food was that bad. You know, and I'm a foodie through and through. I love food. I love the association of food. I love hanging out with friends and going out to dinner and trying out different cuisines and everything was about food. But like I said, I didn't think it was that bad, but clearly it caused enough damage to my organs, right? So I, you know, when, when you have uh, the gallbladder surgery, they, they release you with, uh, you know, this, this very bland, very, very strict diet. And I took to it like none other because I felt like someone shook me and said, you need to change, you need to get healthy, and you need to figure it out. And I took to it like nothing else. I have given it my all because... The only consistency that I had within the last 10 years was food and how I felt when I ate food and how it lifted my spirits. And I felt that when I was depressed, if I would go to eat by eating, I would feel happy and then I'd want to eat a little bit more and a little bit more. So like I said, that relationship was, it wasn't, it wasn't the healthiest because I wasn't eating the right type of foods. I was eating a lot of, um, uh, fried foods, a lot of fast food, uh, a lot of sweets. And I'm the type of person that I am a snacker. I, I don't necessarily eat big meals, but I like to snack. I'll snack on chips here. I'll snack, I'll snack on sweets there and this, that, the, or the other. And um, I didn't think, like I said before, it was that bad. So when I got home from the hospital, um, we threw everything out in the pantry, we, I mean, I started from scratch and I was like, I am going to get healthy. I need to get this under control. And that's exactly what I did. So, like I said, we threw everything out and my husband, uh, he has been such a rock throughout all of this, um, that he took to my same, uh, lifestyle, eating lifestyle. And we are, we are both healthier than we have ever been. And I don't like to call my new lifestyle a diet because diets clearly don't work for me. I fall off the wagon way too quickly. I want something, I wanted something that I knew I could do for the rest of my life. So what I ended up doing is I replaced the fried food, the fast food with fruits and vegetables. And I also uh, drastically decreased my calorie count. And what I ended up doing is uh, one of the first days after the hospital, I sat down and I, and I had a food diary. I know some people might think it's silly, but having a food diary, having me log in what I eat has really helped me stay on track. But I was curious as to what, you know, what I would eat before. And even though I couldn't tell you, you know, pinpoint I had 10 chips or I had 15 chips, I ballparked what I would eat. And I also got a, um, an app. Um, I think it's called my net diary, if I'm not mistaken where you can input everything that you eat and it tells you your calorie count, it tells you your grams of fat, and you can also set a goal weight for yourself. So I ended up doing that and I inputted what I would normally eat before I had my gallbladder surgery. And I put in a few days and I was eating anywhere from 3,500 
to 4,700 calories a day. Times that by seven, that's a lot of calories that I was eating. Plus I wasn't really doing any exercise. So I knew there, when I saw it in black and white, I was just like, I have to change this because no one made me eat the food. No one made me do this. I have to fix it for myself. And there's nothing more satisfying than coming to a conclusion on your own terms. Yes, you have people telling you you should do this and you should do that, but that mentality doesn't change. That I feel like for me, it didn't change until I saw it, until I was able to do it for myself. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I felt like it was just going in one ear and out the other. So I replaced all of that fried food, all of that, all of that stuff with my new eating habits. And um, I can't really process red meat, uh, so I have a very difficult time with that. So I don't really eat that, um, as well as pork. Those two um, really do quite some damage on my intestines. So I tend to stick to chicken breast. You name it, we grill it, we boil it, we bake it. You name however you can do chicken breast, we have done it, except for deep frying it or anything like that. So chicken breast, um, fish, and ground turkey. Those are the three main proteins that I stick to. And a lot, a lot of vegetables and a lot of uh, fruit. And for butter or for mayonnaise, I have kind of replaced it with avocado. And avocado has been amazing because <laughs> it tastes so, so good. And I feel like it really livens up my plate. I, I drastically changed, you know, how many calories or I eat. I'm not talking that I went down to 500 or 700 or anything like that. I stayed in the, in the healthy, in the healthy range, but I wasn't eating the 35, the 37, the 4,700 calories of high, high fat, high calorie items that did absolutely nothing for my health. Um, and I, you know, I get a lot of questions on whether or not I, I, I go back to what I used to eat before. Um, I have indulged myself in a few free days and I call them free days because I feel that by having a positive association with it and not calling it a cheat day, it kind of changed my, it changes my perspective on it. You know what I mean? So I have indulged myself in some of the things that I used to eat before. I don't eat as much as I used to before, but I also don't find them as satisfying as I used to think that they were, you know, because I feel like my stomach, I feel very uncomfortable. I feel, I feel very bloated after I eat those, those foods. And I'm just like, nah, it's not worth it. I rather just eat what I'm eating now. And maybe as time goes by, I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to successfully indulge into those foods a little bit more but the way that I am and the way that my personality is, it's a very slippery slope for me. So I would rather, I rather not do it. I rather just completely cut it out because I know it's difficult for me and the type of person that I am. And as far as working out goes, you know, I, I feel that baby steps have really worked out for me. And it's not about going balls to the wall, doing 90 minute workouts, something that you've never done before. Because for me, I wanted to be able to enjoy what I'm doing. And if I did 10 minutes of cardio one day, I'd push myself to do five minutes the next day, five minutes more, and then I'd increase it little by little by little. And then it got to the point where I enjoyed doing it. I looked forward to working out, to running, to doing this, to doing that and the other, instead of saying, oh, I have to get up and I have to go do this, you know, but I would still push myself to do it. And I also felt that, you know, not everybody is different. Not everybody is the same. Everybody, every single body is different. I'm not a nutritionist. I've said this before, but I just want to share what's worked out for me. And I feel that, you know, it, it's not a cookie cutter type of lifestyle. And I'm not a gym person. I would much rather be outside. I'd rather go running outside. I'd rather go walking, hiking, doing all those things because it makes me feel a little bit better to the point where it doesn't even feel like exercise. It just feels like another another part of my day. And going to the gym, it just it's not for me and that's okay. Going to the gym doesn't have to be for everybody, you know? And I kind of beat myself up about that. But what I really beat myself up about the most is the number on the scale, because 
for the longest time, I would always, I'd jump on the scale and immediately the depression would set in and I would beat myself up about it because I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm not this size. I'm not a size two. I'm not a size zero. And I weigh this much. And I was so hard on myself, but I had to change my state of mind. And what I meant by that is I focused on getting healthy, getting my liver under control and, and changing how enlarged it is and changing uh, the fatty deposits that they have that it has and focusing on being healthy and the bonus is the weight that comes with it so by focusing on that and not focusing on i need to weigh this much i need to weigh that it changed everything i felt like it i felt like it changed my willpower it changed how i felt about myself because it's been extremely, ex extremely, extremely difficult um, because I give it my all. I, I change my eating habits that I'm happy with. I'm happy with what I eat now. I look forward to eating and I feel comfortable with what I'm eating. I no longer have stomach issues. Constantly I would tell Robert, oh, I don't feel good. My stomach hurts. I don't feel good. My stomach hurts or anything like that. But the craziest thing has been how I see myself because I've, I've also, um, I've seen old coworkers and they constantly sit there and they're like, Oh my gosh, you've lost so much weight. Oh my God, you're so skinny. Oh my God, this, Oh my God, that. And they put such an emphasis on what they're saying that it makes me question how I felt before. It makes me think, wow, I was that bad, right? I was that bad. And I kind of try to get that off of my mind because I know that they're not saying it to be mean and I know they're not saying it to, to, to be rude or anything like that. But sometimes certain words just hit you like a ton of bricks, you know? So I had to push beyond that because for me, it was about my health and putting, um, putting how, how I felt about myself first. And self-love is okay. And I've learned that it's not about a number on a scale. It's about how you feel up here and right here. Because looking in that mirror, before I saw someone completely different. You know, I felt like all the names that people would call me were written all over, like I said before. But now I see me for me. And I'm not to the point where I can see how much weight I have lost just yet. Not all of the weight that I have lost, but I'm getting there. I'm getting better and better little by little. And I feel that little by little has worked out this far for me. So if little by little, as far as a mental state of mind, then that works out even better. Because for me, it's about my state of mind and changing that and being able to completely turn my life around. I feel like I'm 20 years old again. And for the first time in a very long, long time, I love who I see in the mirror. I love who I see looking back at me. And it's such a motivating, such a thrilling feeling to feel that way. And if you have a support system, if, you know, if it's your husband, if it's your mom, if it's your dad, your partner, whoever, is your support system or whether you're doing it on your own the satisfaction that you get when you when you feel that way it's absolutely exhilarating absolutely exhilarating so for me baby steps work out you know and doing little by little and by being able to change my mentality more than anything has helped out the most and it's not the number it's not that, it's how you feel about yourself, you know, and it's not having to conform to being a size two or a size four or anything like that. I have lost over 55 pounds and I am extremely, extremely proud of what I've accomplished. I still, I decided to set a goal for myself. I still have a little bit more to go, but I feel great. I feel like I'm 20 years old. I feel like I have so much energy and you know, it's, that's, that's what counts. That's what, that's what's, that's what makes it even that more enjoyable. Like I said, I know it's extremely difficult to talk about 
and some people might put you down and some people might say, oh, you've changed or oh, this or oh, that. You were better when you were, when you were this way. You were better when you were that way. And everyone's entitled to their opinion, but your opinion is the only one that matters. And if you want to get healthy, do it for yourself. Don't do it for Sally Sue or for Billy Bob or for anybody else. Do it for your health. And if you're worried about the number on the scale, that'll come along with the healthy lifestyle. It'll come with it. And don't focus on that. Focus on just the health part. And you'll feel a thousand times better. I've been very lucky that Robert has given me the support that he has. Uh, he has also lost over 50 pounds, and my mom has been such a rock throughout this entire process. But I'm also eternally thankful to everyone on my in my YouTube family and my Instagram family who have given me such words of encouragement with every mod shot picture that I post, because a lot of you know that when it comes to mod shots, it's very difficult for me. Um, but the encouraging words and the support that I've gotten from you guys has been absolutely amazing. My journey didn't consist of any crazy diet or any super pill or anything like that. More than anything, it was changing my perspective on things and changing my mentality on how I wanted to tackle it. You know what I mean? By not focusing on a number on a scale, more so by focusing on getting healthy, getting my liver under control. So there's, you know, for me, that's, that's how it ended up working out. Every single person is going to be different. And like I said in the beginning, weight, talking about weight in general, or when it comes to tackling weight loss, it can be very difficult uh, because you feel like you're never going to get there. I felt that way. I felt like I'm never going to get to my end goal. Why am I even trying to do it? But the more and more I pushed, the more and more I challenged myself, the, 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 the sweeter the, the satisfaction was in the end. And I still have a little bit to go. Uh, but so far, I am ridiculously happy. I am so proud of myself for getting to where I have gotten and just focusing on the health aspect of it and the bonus was the weight loss. So I hope that this video was helpful. Um, and like I said, if there's anything that I can do to help anyone out there, um, then I'm all for it. And I hope that this video was able to help at least someone out there. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.